Welcome everybody to a packed National Basketball Arena for the under 19A schools league final between School Crease Re Port Leash and Loretto Abbey Docky. I'm Connor Meany and I'm joined in commentary here by Paul Carr, one of the Basketball Ireland Deve Development Officers. Paul, it's loud in here, one of the biggest crowds we've seen for any of the schools games and it's already loud. Yeah, fantastic crowd here in the arena today for uh, what's bound to be a great game of basketball. Uh, Skull Crease 3 are looking to be the second team this week to do the double of the League and Cup after Castle Troy uh, did it in the boys under 16B um, and they've just been on a, a great year this year obviously winning the under 18 Women's Cup uh, with Port Leash Panthers as well so Docky will have to be at their best to get the win today Yeah, 2020 has been very bright for a lot of these players there's 8 of this Skull Crease 3 team won the under 18 National Cup in club and at least five of that team also played the Division 1 uh, Cup, which they won. But that's a bright start from Loretto Abbey Dockey and a lovely shot for Maria Reynolds from the free throw line. And it gives Dockey an early lead. Pull, Chris Ree look to respond, but can't hit. And Paul, with such a big crowd from Loretto uh, Abbey Dockey out here, it's going to be important, especially as they're the underdogs, to settle in early. Yeah, definitely. I, sometimes it can be a hindrance having so much of a crowd because you, you get nervous, all your uh, schoolmates in the crowd and so much pressure on you. So getting a couple of quick baskets, getting that early lead and getting your school into it and on, on your, helping you out uh, is a huge advantage. Uh, this stage is no, as we've mentioned, is no kind of stranger to Crease 3 but even they have started off nervously here so far a couple of missed shots and turnovers but they'll be looking to the likes of their captain number 7 Kira Byrne who has the ball here just to sell them down she's a fantastic player she drives into traffic there though almost turns it over but gets it back and finds Amy Byrne right in the corner for a big 3 pointer to give Crease 3 their first lead of the game 3-2 as Docky looked to respond, playing against man-to-man -man defense here from Chris 3. Nice take to the basket there, it just doesn't fall by Ashling Marmion. And Chris 3 are out of running, lovely long pass ahead. And that's a great pass there by Sarah Fleming. And that's what Chris 3 are great at, that fast break transition. They get a lot of easy scores off that. You have to be back quick, you have to protect your own run. And that comes a lot from their good defense as well. The shot from the elbow just doesn't fall there for Alice Malin. The ball straight away to Kira Burns' hands. She's going to see what she can set up for Chris Ree. She drives the basket again. Donkey doing a good job of bottling her up as she drives the basket. And a foul is drawn, so that's good work by Loretto Abbey. Lots of pressure on the ball, though. Nothing easy. Skull Crease Ree, coached by Pat Critchley. That's a lovely three-point play inside by Ashton Marmion. Lara McNichols with a lovely pass, finds Marmion underneath the basket. She finishes through contact, gets the layup, and will head to the free throw line for one more. Paul, that was a lovely pass inside and a nice finish. Yeah, and that's what Doc you need to look to do. Chris Skull Crease really play great man-to-man -man defense and pressure up on you and give you no time and no space. So you have to be able to fake and go back door and get them easy baskets. Yeah, nice finish there on the free throw as well. So it's five points all, 5.38 to go in the first quarter here in the National Basketball Arena. Burn skips the ball, cross court, nothing good comes with it though. And that's a oh, lovely pass inside. Just doesn't fall, but an offensive rebound again. And Chris Ree will go back up again, but nothing there. So good physical defense there by Docky underneath the baskets. Don't give anything easy to 
Sean and Dooley with a lovely inbound pass on the baseline and Dooley's back in underneath the basket, nice head fake, steps through, doesn't fall though, a great rebound there by Alice Malin, aggressive rebound, exactly what they're going to need and Marmion's pushing the ball down the court, a lot of contact there, it doesn't go anywhere, the ball comes back though to Malin again and she's underneath the basket, draws the foul on the arm and it's going to be an opportunity for Dockey to regain the lead here if they can get the, the score here. That's the third foul of this first quarter on Skull Crease 3. That foul called on Shauna Dooley underneath the basket. First one doesn't fall for Alice. But she'll get a second chance at it. And that one is good. Pleases the big Loretto fan base here. Nice fake and a nice shot inside. First goal, Chris Rhea, great response straight away. That was Amy Byrne who hit that. Takes her total to five. She hit that corner three at the beginning of the game. And another nice jump shot there. Long three, not gonna fall. But a good rebound, oh, but it leads to a turnover and Creasery are out. Running through Burn, a lovely pass, just slips through the hands of Dooley. And it's gonna be Dockey possession. 7-6 here, 4-11 to go in the first quarter. Paul, both teams are, have settled into this game pretty well. And, uh, a couple of mistakes, and some turnovers, but overall good play. Yeah, and you get that, especially in uh uh, the arena with a crowd like this here sometimes just takes a little while to get settled in but most teams are getting their offences going so it seems to be a good game so far yeah lovely drive baseline there by Ashley Marmion again and she finds her teammate underneath the basket Marmion's had a huge impact on this qu first quarter so far and it's a large part of the reason that Dockey are leading by one And good defense there again, and that's going to lead out into a first time out of the day. We'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back, Loretto Dockey leading eight points to seven here. Paul, we've had a big impact on the game so far by uh, Ashley Marmion, plays for Meteors. She's been on Carl Cabride's Irish under 17 squad. She looks like a very strong player. Yeah, and she's going to be a big difference if Dockey are going to go on and win this game today. She's been fantastic, driving the ball hard, getting the team set up on offense, and they've got a lot of uh, good finishes in and around the basket. Nice defense there by Port Leash, not letting anything in easily, and it's a five second call. So, 3.25 to go, first quarter here, in the National Basketball Arena, Skull Crease Re, trailing Loretto Abbey Docky by one. Good patience, tried to get the ball inside, but almost another turnover. And things just haven't been as fluid as you'd normally expect for Skull Crease 3 but it doesn't need to be fluid when Kira Byrne can get the ball and finish like that over the outstretched arms of the defender Paul. 
Yeah, Claire Bourne, obviously fantastic, and she showed it in all the finals here in the arena this year. But I think Scott Christie are really missing Jasmine Burke out there today. She's off injured, and she just gives that bit of presence inside, gets a lot of good ball and a lot of turnovers because she's quite long athletic so she can turn the ball over on the, on the defensive end and get them out in a fast break a lot of contact not called there though and it's Loretto Abby Dockey out running Ramy with the ball in the corner see what she can create she gets into the lane nice little floater and that's a lovely finish again by Ashton Marmion I've already mentioned the impact that she's having on this game so far and it's Docky in the lead again, 10 points to nine. As you mentioned, they're ex expected to be heavy underdogs but they've started really brightly. Now they push the ball in transition. Trying to get all the way to the basket. Doesn't fall though. That's very unfortunate for Maria Reynolds. She did a great job and pushed the ball in transition. But Chris Reed turned the ball over again and Pat Critchley would be concerned, Paul, just the amount of turnovers in this first quarter. His players are used to this stage, as we mentioned, but they would be a little bit disappointed with the amount of turnovers as we see an offensive foul called an illegal screen there of Maria Reynolds. Yeah, I think the turnovers have a lot to do with how good Dockey's defense have been. They've gotten into the positions, they've stood, they've had their hands up, they haven't reached in, they've been very disciplined. So uh, that, when you have defense like that, it's hard to get past. That's a nice two there for Rebecca Red out in the perimeter. Knocks down the shot. To get the ball back into Marmion. Nice fake. Doesn't fall, but offensive rebound could be there. No. Ultimately stands on the baseline, but a nice move and the basket falling apart. Unfortunately, Basketball Ireland's Daryl Lamb on hand, Paul. He's going to go in and fix that. Uh, the basket expert. Yeah, basket expert. Tireless worker for the organization. The long three just doesn't fall, and it's going to be Dockey's ball. Not a lot of subs so far in the game, Paul. It's just kind of the, the main fives going to, going to work against each other at the moment. Yeah. We have uh, just a, a stop here not sure oh there's an issue with the shot clock I think just a fantastic atmosphere here in the arena just drive to the basket doesn't fall but more time inside than she probably realized. Alice Malin caught that offensive rebound, Paul, and she probably thought that there was someone beside her. She could have gone straight back up, but took a dribble back outside the key. Yeah, and that's one thing we try to coach players. Is the first thing you should always do when you catch the ball is look at the basket, see what's around you. That time, I think she was just trying to get the ball out as quick as possible, make sure she didn't cause a turnover. And that's a big three-pointer there for Sarah Fleming. So biggest lead of the day here for Skull Crease Reed. They lead 14 to 10. 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Marmion drives into the key, draws a foul. That'll be the fourth team foul of the first quarter. So no free throws, but any more fouls in this quarter will lead to free throws for Loretto Abbey Dockey. They got a five second violation the last time they were trying to inbound the ball. Let's see if they can do better here. And it almost leads to another turnover. So that's something that they're going to have to figure out. Stephen Cowell on the bench will shouting instructions out to his team. And he's going to call a timeout to draw something up here for the last play of the first quarter.
So welcome back. 23.9 seconds to go in this first quarter. 15 on the shot clock. It's Maria Reynolds inbounding. She tries to get into the corner. Can't get an easy pass in. Poor Leash not giving anything easy from any of these inbounds. And again, it's a turnover caused by that inbound. And a foul on the fast break. You know, that's frustrating for Donkey. They've had a great first quarter here. Trail by four points, 16 seconds to go in this first quarter. They have to get a stop here. It'll be a big momentum play if, if that's a nice block outside. Big momentum play if, oh, a second block in a row. And a foul drawn by Ashling Marmion again there. So two huge blocks. Unusual enough to see back-to-back -back jump shots blocked. Marmion gets the ball back and gets fouled uh, on the fast break. We mentioned Chris Three are in team foul, so it's two free throws. An opportunity to get the lead back to just two if she can knock these two down. She misses the first though. I think that's the second free throw that Docky have missed in this first quarter. The second one though is good. So it's a three point game. 4.8 on the clock here. Two quick passes down. This would be huge. Corner three and another block. So three blocks in a row for Loretto Abbey Docky. They trail by just three points after the first quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back for the start of the second quarter of what's been a very entertaining game so far. The crowd here loving it. The mid-quarter break there, a duck and what looks like a kangaroo entertaining the crowd. Donkey have the ball though, Chris Rhee aren't even fully onto the court. And they get it in safely here, so. But it looks like it's gonna be a turnover, it is. A nice steal there. And Sean Dooley goes the length of the court. And that's a perfect start for Pat Critchley's team. They'll have been frustrated that they weren't able to open a gap in that first quarter. And now they're up with their press. See if they can force more turnovers. But the press is broken there by Mar or by Dalkey. Good patience. And a foul on the jump shot. So a lovely basket there by Laura McNichols and she gets fouled as well. So she'll head to the free throw line for a chance at one more. That foul was the second foul on Sarah Fleming. So she joins Shauna Dooley on two fouls. And Amy Byrne also has two fouls. So that'll be a bit of a concern for Chris Ree if they pick up any more. Nice baseline pass. Dooley gets the ball at the high post. Nice drive to the basket, a nice finish now. That's back-to-back -back baskets for her. She's coming into the game more and more. The press is broken again by Docky and they attack to the basket. Doesn't fall. Rebound looks like it's there. And it's gonna be called as a jump ball. 
So it's going to be crease to read ball as Molly Garten checks into the game. And Alice Malin takes a well-earned break. So 18-14, 6.58 to go in the second quarter. Under 19A, schools league final. So Chris Reed trying to get the double of the under 19A schools cup and league championships. Nice steal there by Docky though. And they push the ball down the floor. Can they get all the way to the basket? They can, just doesn't finish though. That was great work by Captain Lucy McManus, but she just couldn't finish. And now will Chris Reed punish them down the far end? The ball comes eventually across from Grania O'Reilly, and she finds Sarah Fleming underneath the basket. She'll head to the free throw line. Paul, having so many players who play a club together and also at like Division One uh, National League level, it's obviously a big advantage to Chris Reed. Yeah, definitely, and uh, it's important. You see, many clubs um, who are successful and have Super League or National League teams um, do have very strong school teams with them. It's good to get that extra training in and have that school club link. Yeah, Fleming hits the second free throw. Another good example would be Belfast Star, up in uh, who it's St Malachy's and Belfast and the boys, and we saw them winning earlier in the week. Could take the baseline, but it's going to be a turnover. And the Loretto Abbey offense is starting to struggle a little bit more here. Cree 3 have a five point lead. Kira Byrne sets up the offense. Fleming on the wing. Good defense there again by Docky though. And Paul Stephen Cowles clearly done a lot of good work alongside uh, Martin Mulligan just to get this uh, to get this team ready. Yeah, definitely. And Docky have been having a, a good season. Um, they lost out in the semi-final of the cup to Waterford, who are a very strong team. Mercy down there, um, but they were unlucky. They had a good game that day. Nice finish inside by Kira Byrne. And all of a sudden, it's a seven-point lead. Martin Mulligan, of course, a UCD Marion player. Which adds quality to the side straight away, Paul. As we see a lovely finish inside for Rebecca Redden. And now it's a little bit of a danger zone here for Loretto Abbey. And they're going to call a timeout as they trail by nine with 5.14 to go in this first half. So welcome back. It is loud here in the National Basketball Arena. We have to go silent during the timeouts because the music in the arena, but it is loud as both sets of supporters try to get behind their team. Loretto Abbey Aki trailing all of a sudden by nine points. Paul, how are they gonna find a way to get some opportunities here? Just keep that scoreboard ticking over. 
I think uh, a lot of it is they're doing the right plays. The problem is that their screens just aren't strong enough. The player coming off the screen is either moving before the screen is set or the person setting the screen just isn't setting it in the right space and they're not getting any separation from their defender. So if they can work on that to get a bit more separation, they should get in for a couple of easy scores. Yeah, and Chris Rear increasingly getting opportunities on the fast break as well. So a nice backdoor pass, but it's intercepted there. A good deflection. And we're going to have two subs here as Ashley Malin checks back into the game and Keir McDonald checks in as Molly Garten takes a break alongside Maria Reynolds. So we'll see if those subs can make any impact now. It's a good head fake by Dooley pull up and that's just high quality basketball there by Sean O'Dooley it's a double digit knee, lead now and another steal and it's going to be a run out here and a foul but it doesn't fall but Kira Burns going to head to the free throw line and this is now becoming more the kind of crease three basketball that we're familiar to seeing at this level with uh, Paul yeah they've settled in now in the second quarter and um, some excellent plays, some excellent backdoor cuts and uh, some of the movement off the ball from the high post cutting through the key and getting balls in there so it's been excellent from them I think uh, now that they've settled it could be uh, hard for Docky to get back into this Second one is good for Burns so it's a 13 point game but it leads to a travel so it's been a dominant couple of minutes it's uh, I think a 13 to 4 run for Chris Reed. They get it inside again to Dooley. She doesn't hit it. And a good rebound there by Docky as they push the ball up. Nice pass inside. They're going to have to find. Could have been a foul. There's frustration there. I share <laughs> some of the frustrations for Ashley Marvin there. I thought she might have drawn a foul, but nothing called. And it leads to another turnover. Nice offense. And a nice finish inside there. It's a really smooth offense for Chris Rhee and Grania O'Reilly finishes it off with a nice finish inside though the opportunity here and Dockey get their first score in a couple of minutes an important score there for Lara, or Lara McNichols they needed that Paul just to keep within touching distance in this game yeah they've really struggled to get their offense going here in the second some great defense for Chris Rhee so they, they needed that basket and now that they've got the stop if they can go up and get an Another one, they'll be right back in this and keep the, the lead closer going into the third. And we have another sub here as Ashing Marmion is going to take a break. Uh, Maria Reynolds is coming into the game and on the other end, Shauna Dooley is going to take a break. She tried twice there in the last couple of plays to get a steal, putting her body on the line and she's going to take a well-earned rest. But... A jump ball for us there, but it's going to stay with Loretta Rabbi Docky. An offensive foul called there, which. <laughs> I think I'll just leave. <laughs> so it's crease three ball, 29 16. Three minutes to go in what has been an entertaining first half. The under-19A All-Ireland Schools League Final. Free Street drives the basket through Fleming. Doesn't fall. Good offensive rebound. They're going to have another opportunity. But a correct call there by Katrina White. The shot clock buzzer had just gone off before that layup. So it was a shot clock violation. And it's going to be Loreno Abbey Ball. They're finding it hard to get in a rhythm when they break this press. Nice move inside though, and that's a beautiful finish. 
by Alice Malin. And now it's back to an 11 point game. But I spoke too soon there. I thought Kira Byrne had extended the lead back out, but she missed the layup. So 2.14 to go. This is a better period for Dockey. Mid range jump shot, no good. And Chris Three pushed the ball down in transition. Oh, that's a <laughs> whammy. Yeah, that was a sore one, all right. Yeah, yeah. Certainly a hard foul by Kira McDonald as Rebecca Red drove to the basket. I think Rebecca may be a little winded by that one. I don't think there was any malice or anything like that though, Paul. It was just a hard play, but it ended up being a pretty hard fall to the ground. And I think Rebecca is just a little winded. So into the game comes Amy Byrne, who's going to replace Rebecca. And Amy straight away walks to the free throw line. It misses the first. So Rebecca took the hard foul and it ends up leading to no points given up. It's hard, Paul, when you sub in and the first thing you're asked to do is shoot two free throws. Yeah, especially when you're subbing in for the first time in the game and you're a bit cold and you haven't got a few shots up to settle yourself. Nice pass, just just rolls around a little bit. Just an outside shot here would give a huge bit of confidence to Docky. Just doesn't fall. And it's out fast break. You can see them push the ball. Great job in transition, but good work by Docky to get back. And they get a stop. So 123 to go in this first half. 11 point game. A score here by Docky would do a lot for their confidence. Shooter open in the corner, they don't find her. They're gonna have the ball at the high post. Set six to go on the shot clock. They're gonna need to get a shot up quickly, which they do. Doesn't fall though. Crease three get the ball back. Less than a minute to go in the second quarter. An 11 point lead for the leash team. They're gonna look to extend it here. Shot from the high post. Doesn't fall. Just the rebound can't be controlled by Maria Reynolds. And it's gonna be poor Leash's ball. From the baseline, see what they do here. Oh, nice play. Nice play drawn up to get a baseline shot, just doesn't fall for Fleming. Nice pass inside and the three second call. So, can't stay inside the key there for that long. So Alice Malin was parking the key a little too long. So 30 seconds to go, 11 point game. A big stop here by Loretto Daki. is what they'll need. Instead it's a corner three, doesn't fall. Good rebound, but I think it's gonna be Chris Reed's ball on the arrow. 14.6 seconds to go on the game clock, 14 on the shot clock. And it's a timeout for Pat Critchley. We'll be back in just a moment.
to come back. 14 seconds to go. 11 point lead. Big momentum play here. Let's see what Creasery drew up from their time out there. Docky have 14 fouls, so any foul here would also lead to two free throws. Two screens straight away into Dooley. She can't finish. 12 seconds to go in this first half. One final chance for Docky if they can get it over. Marmion has the ball. Lovely pass ahead. It's going to be an opportunity underneath the basket, and it goes in. So to finish out the first quarter, it's a nine-point game after that big finish inside by Lara McNichols. We will be back in just a couple of minutes after the halftime break.
So welcome back for the second half of the under 19A All-Ireland Schools League Final. Skull Crease 3 leading by 9 points, 29-20 against Loretto Abbey Dockey. Leading the way for Loretto Abbey Dockey, Lara McNichols with 7 and Ashley Marmion with 6, Alice Malin with 5. On the other end it's been a balanced offensive effort. Kier Byrne with 6, Rebecca Red with 6, Shauna Dooley with 6 and Amy Byrne with 5. So Paul, an entertaining first half. A nice fast break here to start the second half. And a nice finish inside by Amy Byrne takes her total to seven. What are you looking for in this second half? Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no way. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable! Even with a little bit of a Zlatan uh, celebration afterwards. So. I think that's what I'm looking for yeah, in the second yeah. half, Connor. And with mixtape up here in the arena. So, defender falls over, leads to a three pointer and a foul, so a chance for a four point play. What a play. Uh, she could only make the free throw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'll forgive her, considering everything else that just happened, but. Port Leash won't forgive her as they come down and score straight away and get their lead back to 10. Nice take to the basket, just doesn't fall. So a little bit frantic in the early going here in this second half. Nice pass, leads to a layup. Nothing working there though, and Dooley on the break. She can't finish, Burn with the rebound. Doesn't go, Dooley with the offensive rebound. And that's a strong finish inside there by Shauna Dooley. Takes her total to eight. She's had a big, big impact in this game so far, uh, Paul. Yeah, she's been fantastic, both offensive and defensively getting rebounds, and that's actually what um, I think is the big difference for Skull Crease 3, is that they've been getting these defensive rebounds, <laughs> as I put a course on them there, and uh, they've been out in transition and getting easy baskets, where Dockies have to work for everything that they do. Nice fast break and a nice finish inside. There, by Fleming, takes her total to five. This pressure defense causing turnovers as well. Good take inside, just can't finish. Good defense by Dooley there. Didn't give up anything easy, so it's a 14 point lead all of a sudden. And we're gonna have subs for both sides as we see Molly Garten check back into the game for Alice Malin. And on the other end, Shauna Dooley takes a break. And Ella Byrne checks into the game. Ella, of course, another one of that under-18 National Cup winning squad. The sort of you need to take advantage now that uh, Dooley's on the bench. They need to control their own boards, try to get a few offensive rebounds and try to get some easy passing around the paint. Deflection not seen there by the referees, so it's Donkey Ball. Great defensive pressure though. And a huge three from the corner by Marmion. That was much needed. They need one or two outside shots to fall for them just to ease the pressure on the inside the key there. Good help by Marmion there, and it's, a, it's going to be a turnover. Docky are out of running. They need to capitalize whenever they have opportunities here. It's a pull up. No good. And a good work on the boards by Fleming. Well, Chris Ree's offense is fantastic. They're just waiting, They're setting the first cutter to draw the defense and then hitting the second cutter to get open shots. It's, uh, it's great to see the patience they have to find that. And that's a, a killer for Dockey. Fleming's three doesn't fall for her, but it's an offensive rebound and finished inside. 
So the lead is back to 13. Marmion goes again into the key. She tries another three. And Chris Rea are out of running. Donkey looking for a timeout. They're going to have to wait until the next whistle, which is going to send Kira Byrne to the free throw line. So we're going to have a timeout, and Kira Byrne will be on the free throw when we get back. So, welcome back, Kira Byrne on the free throw line. 13 point lead, chance to extend it out. 14 point lead, I think that's tied now for the biggest lead of the game so far. So now, biggest lead of the day for Chris Ree. Could be an eight second violation, and it is. And Paul, that's a very hard press to play against because Chris Ree aren't kind of sticking just to one person. They're willing to trap and switch whenever they, they need to. There's obviously a familiarity that they play so much together that they're able to do that really cohesively. Yeah, their press is fantastic. It's been a real struggle for Docky ever since uh, they started in the second quarter to get over that. But um, it comes down to coaching as well. Like. Uh, they're trying to dribble out of that press every time. If you start dribbling to the corners, you're going to get caught. You need to draw up a, a plate in order to break that press. They broke it well there, but the layup just doesn't fall. And when you're trailing in these sort of games, you need those plays to happen. Long range too, doesn't fall. And to be fair to the Donkey, have got a, in the half court, they've done a brilliant job defensively. They've got a lot of stops. They've given up a few transition scores, and it's just offensively they haven't been able to consistently score so far. The kangaroos after taking out one of the signs there for you, Connor. Our wonderful partner is Pinergy. That score is ruled out as well. Stephen Gale looking for VAR there, I think he was taking off. <laughs> so Fleming with the ball on the post. First cutter goes through, second one comes to the high post. Back out to Fleming, who is a fantastic shooter. And she knocks down a big three, so largest lead of the day, 18 points. And a steal there by Byrne. She heads down the court. A lot of contact, no foul. They'll get the ball back. We have subs coming in. So Rebecca Red has recovered from that knock that she took earlier on in the game, and she's going to check back into the game. And here she is with the ball. Finds Fleming, head fake, nice step through, doesn't fall. But Redden gets right amongst it again. 
Don't have to be shy after taking that earlier bump. Marmion with the head fake, drives to the basket, gets blocked though. And it's going to be Dalkey Ball on the baseline. And that's a long range three. A big shot there. There goes Kira McDonald who knocked down the shot from the corner. Couldn't quite see it. But back to 15 points. They're gonna need a score again as quickly as they can. We thought about it there on the perimeter. Six on the shot clock, they're gonna need to get a shot off quickly. It's gonna be a four shot at the end of the shot clock. And Marby gets it off, a good look at the end, but just doesn't fall, and that's a fantastic pass, fantastic run out. And that's wonderful work between Kara Byrne and Sarah Fleming, and Fleming finishes it off. And any momentum that had come from that three-pointer quickly quashed there by Port Leash. That's been a big problem for Docky all day, is they haven't gone on any runs, they've scored, they've got some stops, but they haven't been able to score continuously. And Byrne pushed the ball down the floor, nothing happened there. Excellent ball movement. And a double dri a dribble called, so 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. Two subs coming in for Loretto Docky. 17 point lead, if they can just get it to 14 maybe. 15 even, going into the fourth quarter, Paul. They just can't afford to not score here and then give up a basket. Yeah, they need that score here just to make it some way, uh, give themselves a bit of a daylight, or a bit of uh, shut the daylight for Creasley and get them back into going into the fourth as Marmion tries to drive through. Yeah, it's tough there for her. She probably tried a little too much there with the dribble. Ends up with a turnover, and this is a dangerous, dangerous play here. 21 seconds to go, third quarter. It's already a 17-point lead. Not completely gone, but any score here would just be a dagger for the Loretto Abbey ho hopes. But Sarah Fleming is one of the people that we got to watch out for, but she can't score on that play. And we're going to have two seconds here. It's going to be tough for Noretto to go the length of the floor, so they got to just make sure they don't turn the ball over here. And they get it in. And that will be the end of the third quarter here. 46-29, Skull Crease re-lead. So welcome back for the start of the fourth quarter. We just have to wait a moment as we clear a duck and a kangaroo off the court. Some very aggressive dancing from the kangaroo, Paul. Yeah, I don't think you'd think you'd ever say that sentence at an All-Ireland final. I'm sure me Hollimer Hurtick has said it at some stage in his career. Probably talking about one or two Dublin footballers. You mean five in a row Dublin footballers? So we're back. <laughs> 17 point lead. Oh, 
course, Donkey has also become a hotbed for Dublin hurling these days. All Ireland club champions in recent years. So, is there anything that Loretto Abbey Donkey can do in this fourth quarter that will get them a chance to get back into this game? It's obviously very tough. It's only eight minute quarters. It's a 17 point lead. They haven't been able to consistently score. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle for them if they, to get back into this. Um, especially, they just haven't found a way to break that press successfully, consistently, um, and turn it into scores during uh, during the game. And I think ever since that went on in the second quarter, it's been downhill for Docky. So uh, Martin has been their bright spark as she gets her own rebound there. But uh, the two layups don't fall off the offensive rebounds. Long three, they're going to need some of these. Doesn't go. Another offensive rebound, though. A nice head fake. And can we have more offensive rebounds? Anytime you give up four or five offensive rebounds, it's going to lead to something bad. And it's going to be two free throws for Loretto Abidaki. Just while we're on the free throw line, Paul, the support from both schools today has been amazing. Crease three, obviously, have been brilliant. And then this Loretto Abidaki support has just been absolutely fantastic yeah I think uh, I think Docky have about 450 and um, Chris Ree have close to 200 so um, to pack out the stadium and just be as loud and the mascots and the drums and the signs and everything has just been great to see for uh, school basketball yeah it's fantastic and here we see Fleming again and she's starting to really commit to her own in this second half and it's just a measure of the support that Obviously, the schools give teachers put in a lot of time for people to have this experience play up here at the National Basketball Arena in front of a packed crowd as Fleming gets the basket. Doesn't fall, though, but it's followed up. And it, we're now out past the 20-point mark, 21-point lead, 51-30. School Crease 3 on their way to have the under-19A Schools Cup and League double to add to many of the players under-18 Hula Hoops National Cup and Division One National Cup. 2020, there isn't going to be much room in the medal cabinet for a lot of these players, Paul. Incredible in just two months that they've already about to get their fourth major title. Yeah, and uh, obviously I, um, a lot of credit has to go to all the work that been done down in Port Leash for Port Leash Panthers and obviously the school in uh, School Crease 3. Um, they've just been fantastic. Uh, and it hasn't even been that they've won. They've won most of their games quite comfortably. They've been just so far ahead of everybody and just fantastic to watch. Yeah, Port Leash has developed a problem in the areas that they've just gotten so big that there aren't enough facilities even locally for them to to play and hopefully they get support in some way for them to be able to further develop the game and keep growing it in the way that they have been doing yeah Port Leach have been very active though in uh, seeking stuff there we held um, a sports capital grant talk here in October and uh, they were here and asking plenty of questions and uh, have obviously been in touch and trying to look at getting as much fun as possible and maybe getting some new facilities. So six minutes to go. 3-3 three, three, leading by 21 points. Long range three, just won't fall. And another great rebound by Dooley. She pushed the ball down the floor, passes out, but. And an offensive foul called. And we're gonna, that's her fifth foul of the game as we're gonna have a timeout.
So welcome back. There's a little bit of confusion there. Shonda Dooley picked up her fifth foul and there's a break whenever that happens, but it led into a timeout, so that's why it was slightly longer than usual. So still 21 point game, step back from Marmion. Doesn't fall. And it ends up with Burn, but she steps on the sideline. So, Loretto Abbey ball. A lot of contact off the ball. Bodies flying. Six seconds to go with the shot clock here. It's going to be a shot clock violation if they can't. Before it gets the shot clock violation, it ends up with a jump ball. So, the arrow goes to Chris Ree. Nice head fake by Byrne. Lovely finish there by Captain Kira Byrne. 23 point lead now. Shaft in the elbow just doesn't fall. Paul, the amount of pressure that Chris Reed puts you under, it's just hard to run your offense. Yeah, and especially with the shot clock, that only happened 24 seconds to run the offense. When it, it takes you eight seconds just to get over the free throw or the half court line because of their press, and then it takes you another uh, maybe four or five seconds just to get head into your offense. It's a big rush then to try and get a good shot up. So it's a fantastic press that they run there. Going to be some floor burns after that one. Substitutions coming in. We're just going to check something here on the table. <laughs> Players didn't want to wait. They wanted to just get on with it. We're just going to sort out whatever issue we have here. So 4.14 to go. Final quarter, the under 19A All Ireland Schools League. Dangerous place to dribble into, right over the half court line. The halfway line, the sideline are effectively two extra defenders. Backcourt violation just missed there. Good pressure again, making it difficult to get the ball inside. And Paul, uh, Sarah Fleming has been very impressive in this second half in particular. She's had a huge impact. Yeah, she's been fantastic, especially uh, hitting a couple of threes, long range twos, just spreading Dockey's uh, defense out and giving space for the rest of their offense to, to get into to the key. So she's been great, to be honest. Um, you can't leave her open for a second or she's just going to nail that shot down. Nice pass, doesn't go. You know, it's, <laughs> I've already said it, but this Donkey support, they're obviously not going to win this game, but they have not stopped cheering, not stopped singing for their team, and they're an absolute credit to their school for the effort that they're putting in, and they're rewarded there with a lovely basket inside. Great work by Laura McNichols. She had seven in that first half, and that's another nice score. As Dockey have changed up to a 1 3 1 zone. No foul called. Fleming gets the ball. Again, no foul. Fleming's going to be in the corner. Passes and go. Dockey on the break. Nice take to length of the floor. It just doesn't fall. And Dockey have gotten the ball back. It's a little bit loose at the moment doesn't fall but another basket inside so back to back scores for Laura McNichols gets it back to a 19 point game as Chris Reece slow it down a little bit here they have the ball through Fleming 
And that's a turnover again. So Docky will get the ball back. <laughs> and the ball will stay with Cree 3. Good luck to any of the teachers who have to teach this afternoon when these kids go back into, into class. Yeah, I wouldn't be dancing trying that, to be honest. Maybe just give them the rest of the day off. And that's three in a row for McNichols. Lovely mid-range shot. The leads back to 17. Another shot goes down for Dawkey. As Sarah Fleming checks back into the game. So it's back to a 15 point game. Probably too late for a miracle to happen, Paul, but it's great that Loretto are getting some of these scores late in the game to reward a lot of their hard work. Yeah, they just had a, a few poor quarters, especially the second and third. They just couldn't get the grips with that uh, press that um, Chris Reed put on so well. And uh, it's good to get a couple of scores now and make the score line up a, a, little, uh, a little closer because uh, they have worked hard today. Big three. The roof would have lifted off the arena here if that had gone in. But it's Chris Reed's ball. So Chris Ree with the ball. Six seconds to go in the shot clock. Sarah Fleming's gonna have to shoot it. She's not gonna recognize it though. And a shot just in time. Both teams stop with the shot clock, but Dockey run out. Nice pass on the break. And a foul is called. It's gonna be two free throws. As the Crease Re fans sing that they believe that they will win. A 15 point lead with 40 seconds to go gives them that belief. Yeah, I believe they will as well. <laughs> now that's seven unanswered for Dawkey. And it's going to remain Dockey's ball. 37 seconds to go in this. The under 19A schools league final. School Crease 3, Loretto Abbey Dockey. A packed national basketball arena here in Tala. School Crease 3 about to take the under 19A schools league and cup double. But Loretto Abbey are still fighting away. And another finish inside. It's now a 12 point game. But Paul, as we head into the last 20 seconds, huge credit to Loretto for the fight that they've put up here. They're clearly a very good team, but they've come up against one of the top squads in the country. And you can see that today. Greece Re are deserving under 19A winners. Oh, definitely, I think. Skull Greece Re just this season. And have just been fantastic and the well deserved winners and uh, you see the celebrations starting here now it's just fantastic to, for them to to, um, to win and to have another trophy for the cabinet in such a successful season um, from myself and Connor I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in we're going to leave you with the presentation so uh, well done to Skull Crease 3 and congratulations to Loretto Abedagi